The financial system is a complex web of interconnected players and forces. Recently, a peculiar pattern has emerged, one that has market watchers and participants alike scratching their heads. As each month draws to a close, a curious phenomenon occurs. Overnight lending rates, the very lifeblood of short-term funding markets, experience sudden and sharp spikes. These spikes, while seemingly fleeting, have raised concerns about the underlying fragility of the financial system. This isn't just an esoteric financial matter, it has real-world implications. These rate spikes can disrupt the smooth functioning of markets, making it more expensive for businesses to secure the short-term funding they need to operate. This, in turn, can have a ripple effect throughout the economy, potentially impacting everything from business investment to consumer spending. Understanding why these spikes are happening is crucial to mitigating their potential impact. The answers, as is often the case in finance, lie in a confluence of factors, from the issuance patterns of U.S. Treasury securities to the regulatory constraints faced by Wall Street's biggest banks. Let's delve into the heart of this issue and explore the forces at play. At the center of this month-end drama are Wall Street's biggest banks, institutions like J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, and Citigroup. These financial behemoths play a critical role in facilitating the smooth functioning of short-term lending markets, acting as intermediaries between those who have cash to lend and those who need to borrow it. These banks, however, are not simply benevolent actors, they are profit-seeking entities operating within a complex web of regulations. One such regulation, known as the Supplementary Leverage Ratio, or SLR, has become a key factor in the recent surge in overnight lending rates. The SLR, in essence, limits the amount of leverage banks can take on by requiring them to hold a certain amount of capital against their assets, including things like loans and even U.S. Treasury securities. While this might seem like a prudent measure to ensure the solvency of these institutions, it has had the unintended consequence of making banks more reluctant to hold certain assets, particularly towards the end of the month. Exacerbating the situation is the U.S. Treasury Department, which issues trillions of dollars in debt securities each year to fund the government's operations. These securities, considered among the safest investments in the world, are typically auctioned off to investors, including Wall Street banks. Here's where the timing comes into play. The Treasury Department tends to issue a large amount of new debt towards the end of each month, a period when banks are already grappling with the constraints imposed by the SLR. This influx of new Treasury securities further strains banks' balance sheets, making them even more reluctant to lend in the overnight market. This dynamic creates a supply and demand imbalance. With banks less willing to lend, the price of borrowing, reflected in overnight lending rates, shoots higher. This, in turn, can create a vicious cycle, as higher borrowing costs further dampen demand for funds. The SLR, while well-intentioned, has become a focal point in the debate over the recent volatility in overnight lending rates. Critics argue that the regulation, in its current form, is too blunt an instrument, penalizing banks for holding safe and liquid assets like U.S. Treasury securities. This, they contend, is counterproductive, as it discourages banks from playing their traditional role as market makers, providing liquidity and stability to the financial system. The result is a market that is more prone to sudden swings in sentiment and pricing as evidenced by the recent spikes in overnight lending rates. The debate over the SLR highlights the delicate balance regulators must strike between ensuring the safety and soundness of the financial system and fostering an environment that allows for the efficient allocation of capital. The month-end spike in overnight lending rates is a symptom of a larger issue, a periodic shortage of cash in the financial system. This cash crunch occurs when banks, facing regulatory constraints and a deluge of new treasury issuance, become less willing to lend in the overnight market. This reluctance to lend stems from the simple fact that banks, like any other business, need to manage their own cash flow carefully. Holding large amounts of excess cash, especially towards the end of the month when regulatory reporting deadlines loom, can be costly for banks. This is because banks are required to hold a certain percentage of their deposits in reserve at the Federal Reserve, and these reserves earn little to no interest. Holding excess cash, therefore, can eat into banks' profits, making them less inclined to hold on to it, especially when lending rates are low. 
The situation is further complicated by the interconnected nature of the financial system. As overnight lending rates rise, it becomes more expensive for hedge funds and other leveraged investors to finance their positions. This can lead to a cascade of selling as these investors are forced to unwind their trades to meet margin calls. This selling pressure can further depress asset prices, leading to a vicious cycle of falling prices and forced selling. This feedback loop can amplify the initial shock of rising overnight lending rates, creating a ripple effect throughout the financial system. This interconnectedness highlights the importance of a stable and predictable funding market. When the cost of short-term borrowing becomes volatile and unpredictable, it can create uncertainty and risk aversion among investors, leading to a pullback in lending and a slowdown in economic activity. The recent spike in overnight lending rates has not gone unnoticed by market observers. Goldman Sachs, one of the most influential investment banks in the world, recently issued a warning to its clients, predicting that these spikes are likely to become a more frequent occurrence in the coming months. The bank's analysts cited a confluence of factors, including the ongoing influx of new Treasury issuance, persistent inflationary pressures, and the Federal Reserve's ongoing efforts to unwind its massive balance sheet as contributing to the tightening liquidity conditions in the market. This warning from Goldman Sachs, a bellwether for the financial industry, underscores the growing concern among market participants about the potential for further volatility in overnight lending rates. This volatility, if left unchecked, could have significant implications for the broader economy. Section 8. Navigating the New Normal The recent volatility in overnight lending rates is a stark reminder that the financial system is still grappling with the aftershocks of the 2008 financial crisis. The regulatory reforms implemented in the wake of that crisis, while well-intentioned, have had some unintended consequences, particularly in the market for short-term funding. Market participants are now tasked with navigating this new normal, one characterized by tighter liquidity conditions, increased regulatory scrutiny, and the ever-present risk of sudden and sharp moves in overnight lending rates. This requires a more proactive and nimble approach to risk management as well as a keen understanding of the interplay between regulatory policy, market dynamics, and investor behavior. The ability of market participants to adapt to this new environment will be crucial to ensuring the smooth functioning of the financial system and the continued flow of credit to the broader economy. Section 9. The Bigger Picture The recent volatility in overnight lending rates is not merely a technical issue confined to the realm of finance. It is a symptom of a larger structural issue, the growing mismatch between the supply of and demand for safe and liquid assets. On the one hand, the United States Treasury continues to issue a massive amount of debt to fund the government's operations. This debt, backed by the full faith and credit of the United States, is considered among the safest and most liquid investments in the world, making it highly sought after by investors, particularly during times of economic uncertainty. On the other hand, the supply of these safe and liquid assets is constrained by a number of factors, including the Federal Reserve's ongoing efforts to unwind its massive balance sheet, which removes Treasury securities from circulation. This imbalance between supply and demand is a key driver of the volatility in overnight lending rates, as investors scramble for a limited pool of safe and liquid assets. Section 10. A Call for Action the recent volatility in overnight lending rates is a wake-up call for policymakers and regulators. It is a clear indication that the current regulatory framework, while well-intentioned, may be having unintended consequences, particularly in the market for short-term funding. Addressing this issue requires a multifaceted approach. Policymakers need to carefully consider the impact of regulatory changes on market liquidity and ensure that regulations are calibrated in a way that balances the need for safety and soundness with the need for market efficiency. This may require revisiting some of the post-crisis reforms, such as the supplementary leverage ratio, to ensure that they are not unduly constraining the ability of banks to provide liquidity to the market. Additionally, policymakers need to address the underlying structural issues that are contributing to the shortage of safe and liquid assets. Section 11, Conclusion, A System Under Stress. The recent volatility in overnight lending rates is a stark reminder of the fragility of the financial system. 
It is a clear indication that despite the significant reforms implemented in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis, the system remains vulnerable to shocks and disruptions. The interplay of factors driving this volatility, from the influx of new treasury issuance to the regulatory constraints faced by banks, highlights the complex and interconnected nature of the financial system. Addressing this issue requires a coordinated and thoughtful approach from policymakers, regulators, and market participants alike. Failure to do so could have significant consequences for the stability of the financial system and the health of the broader economy. The stakes are high, and the time for action is now.